So I've spent the past month testing out something new. Well, new to me, the Smart Ring from RingCon. It's been an interesting experience, not just because of the tech that comes inside of it, but because of what I think is the best feature of Smart Rings in general, the fact that you tend to forget about it. And that's a really good thing. I've used a ton of wearable tech over the years, starting way back at the original Fitbit. But there are some unique advantages that a Smart Ring has over other wearables. In this video, I'm gonna break down what makes the Ring Con stand out, the features that you get with it, and whether or not it could be the next essential gadget for your daily routine. If you're curious about how a tiny ring can do so much, stick around. This might just be the smart wearable that you've been waiting for. Welcome back to This Smart House. I'm Ryan the Tech Guy, and on this channel, we mainly focus on the latest in smart home technology. But today, we're gonna stretch that definition just a little bit. Smart rings aren't exactly a new concept. You might've even heard of a few of them, like the Aura Ring or the new Samsung Smart Ring. But what makes the Ring Con stand out is its seven day battery life, 24 seven wearability, and no subscription cost. So the idea here is very simple. You wear it like any other regular ring and forget it's even there. The ring is comfortable, durable, and really designed to be worn all the time, whether you're eating, sleeping, working out, or even swimming. Now that's the beauty of it. It's a piece of tech that almost fades into the background of your daily life. I do wanna point out that this is actually the first generation ring I know that RingCon has just launched their Kickstarter campaign for the second generation, but I'm sure a lot of you are curious if the original version is still relevant in 2024. Plus with the new version coming out, we should probably see a price drop for the first generation ring, which could make it an even better value. I plan to post an updated video once I get my hands on the generation two, so stay tuned for that. And real quick, a big thank you goes out to RingCon for sending this over. So before we jump in, let me know in the comments below if you're a fan of fitness trackers or if you just ignore the ones that come on your watch or your phone. So what's packed inside this tiny sleek ring is pretty impressive. Despite its minimal design, the ring con is loaded with tech. It tracks various health metrics, including steps, heart rate, blood oxygen level, sleep patterns, activity, and stress. It can even detect if you take a nap. And all this data is synchronized to their companion app for both Android and iOS. The app will even provide periodic health reports and suggestions for improvement. You get all of this data without any additional cost. So the Ring Con is actually available in three different colors, giving you some options to match your style. Whether you prefer a classic silver, traditional gold, or a bold black like I selected. And the titanium outer band not only looks sleek, but also adds durability, ensuring it can handle everyday wear and tear. I actually thought I scuffed up the ring the other day while I was installing lights over at my friend's house, but it turns out I actually just scratched off the coating on the aluminum ladder. Which is another good point. Because it's wrapped in titanium, which is an extremely hard metal, it could scratch or damage softer surfaces. RingCon does make a silicone protector, or you can grab one of several off of Amazon. This protects your ring if you're worried about it damaging something else. And this durability doesn't really come at much of an increase in weight. The ring itself weighs less than five grams, which is about the same as a sheet of paper or even a nickel. So once you get used to it on your hand, you almost stop noticing it's there. It's also only two millimeters thick in most places. So if you have larger hands, it just looks like a normal ring. Now, speaking of the design of the ring, there is a nice subtle convex dip here on the top of the ring. So I find myself testing that surface to make sure I have the ring turned in the correct direction. Now, if you were to take the ring off, it's pretty easy to know which way you need to wear it. The ring itself is a squircle shape where it's sort of a squared off circle and has two small protrusions here at the bottom. This is where the sensors live. The ring uses two different color LEDs a green LED to measure heart rate and a red LED for SpO2. You'll also notice two contacts on the bottom. This is where it connects to the included charging case. Another thing that might take a little bit of getting used to is that you can actually see the LEDs at night. You can see the green and red LEDs on your palm side as it's taking measurements. It is a reminder that you're not wearing just a normal ring, but I say that because some folks might be bothered by that light at night. Now going back to charging, the Ring Kong actually comes with a charging case that has its own 500 milliamp hour battery on board. That will actually charge the ring in about 90 minutes. You just drop the ring in and it starts charging automatically. There's only one way to put it in correctly. Now one thing of interest is that the case is actually unique to each ring size. So there's really no fiddling around once you have the ring in the right orientation. And then if you need to, you can charge the case with any USB-C charger. Now Ring Kong and most other manufacturers recommend that you wear it on your index finger. I typically wear mine on the middle finger just because it's more comfortable. And so far, I haven't had any data issues. And thanks to the IP67 waterproofing, you can wear it in the shower, while swimming, or even doing the dishes without any worry of damaging it. And once you've got it on, it synchronizes effortlessly with the RingCon app, 
which can connect to both Google Fit and Apple Health to store your data in the cloud. This gives you a great detailed overview of your daily health metrics. So when you first open up the app, and after it synchronizes your data, at the very top, you're gonna to notice this wellness balance. This is a nice single point of information that lets you know how you're doing during the day. This takes into effect your vital signs, so like your heart rate and SpO2, your activity based on your steps, your sleep, and also the stress monitoring that's built in as well. It creates this cool little diamond shape that kind of lets you know how today went versus the last seven days. You'll notice in the background there's a blue diamond that indicates the last seven days average. You can of course click on this and then it'll give you a detailed breakdown of how the score was actually generated. Then below that, we have all the rest of the four key areas that it takes data from. You got your sleep, you got your activity, you got stress, and you got your heart rate. So if you click on any one of these, it'll give you some insights into why you got that particular rating or if there's some information about maybe why you didn't get good sleep that night. On the sleep screen, you can actually give each day a rating and it will store that in its little journal section at the bottom. And there's just a ton of information on your sleep patterns. It'll tell you the time that you were awake, how much time you were in REM sleep, light sleep, deep sleep, etc. Even your heart rate and heart rate variability throughout your sleep cycle. So there's just a ton of information that's here every day when you open up the app. It also takes into account temperature, so it can take skin temperature as an additional reading and add it into the figures for sleep and other activities. So the same thing's true with activities. So you can go in and see different types of activities that it tracks. Then it also has a stress section, which shows you different times of the day, before or after sleep, and gives it a rating from zero to 100. And then finally, we have the heart rate, which it takes data throughout the day and it charts it on a single screen here. Then at the bottom, you have your health timeline, which is where you can add in either a static journal entry or it'll show you when you achieve a goal. You can also go in and add your own note throughout the day for tracking, tracking things like what type of activities or workouts that you did that day. Right now, there's only a limited number of activities that you can track specifically in here, like outdoor running, indoor running, outdoor cycling or outdoor walking, but hopefully they'll add more here soon. Then on the trends tab, this is where you can access all of your reports. If I click on weekly and yearly report, I can see a summary of the last week with some suggestions on how to improve my score. You can see all your historical data and you can also share it with somebody else. Now I did mention before that it will synchronize on Android to Google Fit and on iOS to Apple Health, but you can actually export all of your data as a CSV file by clicking on data management and then going to data export. It's gonna send you an email for a specific day or date range. So this is great for you data nerds out there. Then at the top right hand corner, we have a indicator of the battery level. And if you click on that, it takes you in showing you the battery level and all the detailed information about your ring, including firmware version. So not only does the ring actually track a ton of data, it also gives you some helpful insights using the reports into how to improve your scores and your overall health. Now I've actually taken some of this data and integrated it into Home Assistant using the Google Fit integration. I'm planning on a video showing how to set this up along with some alternative methods now that the Google Fit API is not available for new developers. So please let me know in the comments if you're interested in taking a look at that. So all in all, a smart ring is a completely different beast compared to a smartwatch. Without the luxury of adjustable straps, getting the right size is crucial. That's why RingCon actually offers a sizing kit, which gives you sizes from six to 14. And it's definitely worth getting this before you buy the ring. This makes sure you have the perfect fit. I actually didn't use the sizing kit initially and just tried to measure and ended up having too large of a ring, which luckily I was able to swap for a smaller size. And then after that, everything was smooth sailing. Now, one thing worth mentioning is certain activities like weight training or specific sports might not be ideal for wearing the ring. If you really wanna track these types of activities, you might wanna invest in one of those covers or use another device like a heart rate strap. Now, I did some comparison with my Galaxy Watch 4 and I noticed that the heart rate data on the RingCon was on average about 10 to 15 beats per minute lower than the watch itself. While I can't say for sure which one's more accurate, it's just something to be aware of, especially since this is not designed to be a medical device. So that being said, I really find myself wearing my watch much less often, as I now use the Ring to do most of my activity tracking. The bonus of all this, I get a lot more steps recorded. Not necessarily because I'm walking more, but because the Ring tracks all the times I wouldn't normally wear my watch. So where does the ring con fit in with the world of wearables? Now it's not gonna replace your smartwatch, but rather complement it. 
It's great for people who want consistent health tracking without the bulk or distraction of a traditional watch. Now you won't get any notifications or vibrations with the Ring. And to me, that's actually a feature, not a flaw. For folks like me who have ADHD, the lack of consistent buzzes and beeps is a huge plus. It helps me stay focused. Overall, I really like the concept of a smart ring, and I think the Ring Con does a great job of pulling it all together. The titanium outer band is a big win for durability. It's much more robust than a lot of those cheaper smart rings that you've seen on TikTok recently. The app gives you a ton of insight with actionable data. I appreciate how it simplifies the major health metrics into easy to understand numbers. Now, for the important point, the standard price of the Ring Con Gen 1 is $279.99. But as of today, they have a $20 off sale. Now this is a bit cheaper than both versions of the Aura Ring. Plus, you get the added value of no subscriptions. The seven day battery life is also a really nice feature. I find myself popping it into the charging case when it gets around 30%, and it just keeps the ring topped off. I know charging this way isn't the best for the battery long term, but it's the most convenient for me. Now there are a few improvements that I love to see in future versions. For one, it'd be great if the case could wirelessly be charged. If my Samsung earbuds can do it, why can't this? Another feature I'd like to see is some sort of tracking function if you happen to set the ring down and forget where it is or if it slips off. Of course, I'd like to see additional sensors available for the ring. And I know the new version has some additional features coming as well. So all in all, I really think the Ring Con is a solid option for anyone looking to keep tabs on their health without all the extra baggage. It's simple, stylish, and smart in all the right ways. And I even think the Generation 1 ring is still a well thought out and solid product. It's definitely still worth taking a look at in 2024, especially if you can get a good deal on it. If you are interested in picking one up, please use the links in the description. They go to help support the channel and let RingCon know you got good information from this video. I'll also post any deals that I find on the pinned comment on this video. So if you wanna check out all of my smart gear reviews, you can find a playlist right over here. So let me know what you think and let me know if you wanna see more videos on other tech gadgets. I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.